Hello, in today's video I try my hand at some sci-fi paneling. I paint something that vaguely looks like the Earth. Also that I can make a moon base. I recently have been watching a lot of Adam Savage's tested YouTube channel and he covered some sci-fi techniques like paneling and spaceship making and I've wanted to try to push my scratch building techniques for a while now so I decided I'd give it a try. Now if you're asking yourself what the heck is starship or spaceship panelization or paneling, just think Star Wars. Almost all the ships made from the original trilogy are made using this technique and quite a few from the prequels as well. It really is sad that they kind of ended the whole series after the Return of the Jedi and nothing ever happened after that. But back to panelization. So the whole idea is just to create these random shapes and then fill up these panels because nothing truly is one solid piece. So you add more panels to on top of panels, cutting these little nicks and reliefs out and just adding texture here and there. And then trying to find that happy medium between too much and not enough texture. And this is where keeping all of the extra little bits and bobs from other models, if you make models, comes in handy. As you can start gluing those pieces on, that kind of go with the theme that you're looking for. Once I was happy with the surface details, I then gave it a quick coat of primer. And followed that up with a white base coat. I wanted to add a second color, so for this I chose a very bright neonish, almost orange color. I ended up freehanding what was originally going to be stripes and then just painted the whole right portion of it. Once all the paint was dry, I sprayed it down with some water and I used some wet sandpaper to just slightly wear the edges down and pull some of that orange paint away. I've been using a lot of chipping fluid lately and I wanted to try a new technique of weathering. So again, I'm just sanding all these little pieces trying not to go all the way down to the bare styrene. And then it was time for some extra little details. These are just some water slide decals from an M41 Walker Bulldog model that I've had. And for this, the Japanese characters were actually kind of speaking to me, so I cut them out and applied them to the piece. With the first pass of weathering done, it now needed to be dirtied up. This is far too clean, especially being on the moon, so I made a gray oil wash. I set that aside to dry, and then I focused on the base. For this, I just used my standard polystyrene foam. I wanted to give it a little bit of extra texture, so I used a heat gun. Make sure if you do do this, to do this in a very well ventilated area, because this stuff stinks when, it, when it's burning. Or better yet, just do it outside, unless you have to film it. I just ran the heat gun over the surface here and there just to kind of give it that undulating surface, that unevenness to it, and focused it here and there to emphasize the craters or impacts. I then gave it a black base coat to hide all the white foam. I wanted a little bit of a built up area on the left hand side, so I used some more foam to create the volume needed for it. This way the moon base could fit into the landscape a little bit better. Speaking of the landscape, I moved on to applying the quote unquote dirt. It's actually called Lunar Regolith, if you really want to know. For this, I used two dark gray colors of grout. And to make it even a little bit darker, I added some crushed up charcoal. The actual surface of the moon is quite dark, as opposed to what you think of when you look at the full moon. So that charcoal really helped bring it down and tone down that gray. I glued it to the surface using some watered down Mod Podge. I shook it on with a sieve. The sieve ended up not really being necessary as the grout was too fine and mostly passed through. So I ditched the bigger sieve for a smaller one, which worked a little bit better. And to finally seal it all in place, since it's grout, I sprayed it with water to help activate that grout. So it would naturally firm up and crust over. It was about to this time that I felt the surface needed a little bit more detail, so I grabbed some rocks from my stash and applied them or embedded them into the curing grout. I wanted like a fuel pipe to be coming out of the moon base and going over towards a landing pad or a launching pad. So to do this, I just used some acrylic tubing. This stuff was left over from an old PC water cooling project, and it actually comes in quite handy for making pretty realistic looking pipes. 
The tubing is really easy to work with. All you need to do is heat it to bend it. The problem with bending it is you can also kink it. So you need to insert some rubber piece of tubing inside. This acts like a form or a mandrel, so when you do bend the tubing, it doesn't collapse in on itself. So again, using that heat gun, you just slowly rotate it over the heat. You don't want to focus on it. You don't want to focus it too much on one specific area because you will start bubbling and you will start destroying the tube. You also should be wearing some heat resistant gloves because this does again get pretty dang hot. And then once it's malleable enough, I just use my table and lay it flat and kind of just eyeball a 90 degree angle. At least with it being flat on the table, I know at least one angle is straight or plumb, one of those. And then once it's cooled off, it becomes rigid again and holds its shape. So then I just repeated the process for each and every bend and came out with something like this. To give the pipe a little bit more character, I wanted to make some flanges. So I used some really thin cork material and just cut into long strips and wrapped them around in, in small little segments. With the flanges done, I then moved on to priming and painting. I gave the pipe a white base coat and then freehanded a red stripe along the length of the pipe. But then again, far too clean for the moon, so I sponge chipped on a gray color to emphasize some weathering and follow this up with that same gray oil wash. Once dry, I just used some hot glue and glued it to the surface. And then it was time to do something that I was dreading, and that was painting the earth. On the onset of this piece, I really wanted to have the earth rising in the background, so I needed to figure out how to do it. So I watched a couple dozen tutorials on how to do painting. Again, I've never painted anything like this before in my life, and I got to it. While you guys are watching this, I'll kind of try to explain what I was doing and what I was thinking. Again, I have no experience with this kind of painting. This is the very first or probably second time I've ever painted something like this. So I started with a very, very dark blue and just progressively got to a lighter and lighter blue, focusing mainly on one side and just working that gradient with some wet blending, making the lighter blue into a smaller and smaller band on one side. Once I was happy with that blue gradient, I then went to applying some of the land masses. Luckily, most of it's gonna be covered up with some clouds and in the, the darker side, it will be covered with some darker colors. So it just kind of roughly has to look kind of earth-like. I wasn't trying to perfectly recreate the earth. Once I was happy with it, I covered it with some gloss Mod Podge just to get that little bit of shininess to it. I then threw together a landing pad made from an old tapioca container and some drywall tape and gave it a quick rough paint job. I glued it in place and then added some more grout around it to help embed it into the surface and blend it together. And once again, I fixed it using some water. I then give it a coat of black paint, thinking it was done, but I felt like it needed some more. And then I found this really cool STL of, a, of, of an Apollo era lander, and I knew I just had to have it. So I printed it up and gave it a pretty quick and dirty paint job using the original Apollo landers as reference. Along with the Apollo lander, I found a cool Martian spacesuit from The Martian and then printed and painted him up as well. And then it was finally done.
So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry this one took so much longer to come out than previous videos. Life has a strange way of throwing you curveballs, regardless of whether or not you want them in the first place. But the next one is completely done. I just need to finish editing it. So hopefully the next week or the week after that. But we will see. So yeah, again, if you made it this far, please like and subscribe. You guys are truly amazing. And I'll catch you in the next one.